Cosmos enclosure is finally here, the C700M. Now the previous Cosmos uh, case was a bit of a disappointment to me, you can check out why right over here. So I'm hoping Cooler Master has done their homework in refining this thing so it's actually competitive. Let's see if they did right after this. The new Toshiba XS700 external SSD comes in this beautiful and minimalistic design. Its ultra portable form factor is perfect for creative professionals on the go and with blazing fast USB 3 Gen 2 transfer speeds and Toshiba's excellent three year warranty, reliability shouldn't be a concern. Check out the XS700 from Toshiba down below. All right, so I don't really want to start off with the price point because the new Cosmos C700M retails for $439. That is a significant price increase versus the previous Cosmos, the C700P, which ran for $299, still an expensive price point. But, you know, now we're moving into this above $400 uh, territory and that makes me nervous. And this could be because of the new tariffs between US and China, cases are on the list. Uh, materials like aluminum and steel are on the list and so that could be the reflection of the price points that is you know uh, passed on to the consumer by the way Steve from gamers Nexus made an excellent video about tariffs so go ahead and check it out to familiarize yourself with what's going to be happening with pricing for computer components in the future. But back to the C700M, let's begin with build quality and appearance. It is still that similar, sophisticated, and clearly a Cosmos design. You know, we have those thick aluminum handles and feet that elevate the chassis and beautifully reflect the built-in illumination, while the top handles are super convenient to carry the case that is super heavy, by the way, at 24 kilograms. So that thing is definitely a workout. And it's so heavy because of the steel frame, the giant glass panel and the aluminum handles. So I actually don't mind all the plastic paneling on the exterior to reduce the weight, like the magnetic piece at the back, uh, plus the gray coating on the plastic looks gorgeous. The brushed aluminum front and top sections look very nice without leaving your finger marks. Plus I love the new honeycomb ventilation pattern up top uh, with the built-in dust filter, but this pattern is not found anywhere else on the case. And uh, I find that cohesion element could be slightly improved. Now to me this Cosmos case feels slightly smaller despite being the same size as the previous C700P but they've cleverly slimmed down on that front panel to make the entire frame appear thinner and just for comparison here's the Evolve X that from the front looks much wider. The curved glass panel is totally new it is now much lighter in color so you can actually see inside the case and without that green cast as we saw with the 700P. Both panels are removable and swappable since the the case supports an inverted motherboard layout and one of the panels is just steel because the yields on the curved panels are so low and so expensive plus you don't really see that side so it makes sense to include only one TG and one regular. The IO is totally loaded with four USB 3 ports, a Type-C Gen 2, power reset buttons, a three-speed fan controller and a PWM mode for your motherboard plus an RGB cycle button for that built-in illumination. The fan controller is at the back occupying one of the SSD caddies with six fan supported which is nice plus all the RGB cables are connected to this hub but the worst part is that Molex connection for power instead of SATA and I feel like Cooler Master is still deciding on what type of hub to create because they're always changing and they're never cleaned up properly and the case is not actually built to hide the hub properly. Also we have this additional RGB extension so you can add more strips to it and that is powered via SATA while the main hub is powered via Molex. And I'm gonna give the Evolve X just an example because that is the only case that has done this right with a discrete fan hub in an appropriate location that isn't in the middle of the motherboard tray. The lighting now features addressable RGB strips that span the entire perimeter of the case except for the back. I think it looks gorgeous with thin strips that are not crazy like with a C700P, so the ambient light spill is minimal. You can connect them to a standard five volt addressable header on your motherboard to have all that RGB sync. And aside from cables running everywhere from the hub, the actual quality of the light is fantastic. The front panel opens up for additional airflow and access to five and a quarter inch drive base with a wireless six prong lighting connector. There are two five and a quarter inch drive base, but by default, only one bay is included. You can expand that via the additional uh, included little accessories, but then you kind of lose out on compatibility for 360 or larger radiators. So out of the box, we have three 140 millimeter fans and these are Cooler Master's default 
Fold fans that come with all cases regardless of price point. And you're spending over $400 on an enclosure, you'd expect to have some more premium fans. And while I get that the target audience is most likely going to populate their own radiator and fans and all the cooling customization, they just feel cheap in something like this, you know, potentially just don't include fans at all and give us a slightly lower price point. The top panel is magnetic. And here we have the same fan bracket as at the front, removable with two screws that can house triple 120 or 140 mil fans with their respective radiators. And that's what you'd expect from uh, such a large enclosure. And when you remove the ODD tray, uh, you can mount a 420 rad at the front and the top with maximum thickness clearance of 70 millimeters up top and 55 millimeters with the uh, upper PSU shroud panel in place. Now the interior is where things get fun because the M in the model name stands for maker and I feel this model delivers. First, the dust filter spans the entire bottom section, easily removable from the front. The power supply shroud is now totally new with many more features versus the ugly and dysfunctional two-piece design we saw on the C700P. So first, it is now in two pieces, so we can easily remove the top section from the side. This is especially useful when doing cable management or installing the power supply, or better yet, when installing anything onto the shroud itself, like repositioning this angled GPU bracket, mounting an SSD plate, or installing fans in the bottom chamber. My only complaint is the bare steel that is not coated and leaves finger marks just like on brushed aluminum. For internal storage, we have four of these caddies, good for HDD and SSD that are on this modular rail system and have some height flexibility, while the SSD mounts are tooless using these longer pegs that insert into these plates, a convenient system that also covers up the cable area behind the rails that is also compatible with the reservoir mounting. And so this is where the C700M deserves its maker distinction because the entire frame is completely modular with a pretty intuitive disassembly too. The screws are all the same and there are no hard to reach spots when you have to remove something. The power supply shroud is removed with seven screws and it needs to be supported on all three sides because of the optional GPU mount and because you can invert the motherboard tray it can also be installed in the upper position alongside the PSU bracket. And this means the motherboard tray is fully removable with only two screws that's pretty convenient allowing you to undertake any mods to the frame and of course comfortable hardware installation too. Now it looks like Cooler Master is moving into the right direction for cable management although I don't really like this panel here. With individually channeled front IO cables, so it's not a thick messy bunch, but nicely handled out of the box cable management. That is until we see the bottom with all the fan and RGB cables just killing the whole organization vibe. With the system assembled, that additional cover helps, although this is a side that's not really visible anyway, and it's clear that you have to put in some patience and work into cable management to make it all look pretty and uh, you know satisfying, because otherwise the back section is just completely open for you. There are not that many tools for cable management aside from having those IO cables pre-routed for you. Now here's the default orientation and build. It's a spacious design so any standard non-water-cooled system will look empty and this is where the GPU bracket comes in handy. So for example I have this massive RTX 2080 Ti Duke from MSI that perfectly occupies all that empty room below the motherboard and get this, the GPU bracket can be angled mostly for better visuals and potentially for better temperatures or variations of them depending on your configuration. The downside is the IO as routing any video cables to the GPU is challenging because it's not aligned properly with the rear PCI slots. And if you're feeling experimental, the GPU bracket can be installed uh, vertically on the rail system, again with height flexibility for yet another interesting orientation. And the things you have to consider here is the riser cable which is included and how you route it for a clean look plus temperatures and routing video cables that far into the case. I will explore temperatures in just a little bit but first I want to check out the chimney layout with the IO facing up, thus changing the dynamic once again for airflow and exhaust. After doing it once, it's actually a pretty simple procedure that only requires you to swap out the rear panel for this other ventilation panel, which is also included, and now you have a totally new look and feel. Blower style GPUs are most likely preferred in this orientation, but that rear section is completely open now for GPU intake, although there is no dust filter. 
Even with my massive 2080 Ti, the upper shroud fits in place just fine with 12.5 inches available for GPUs. Lastly, access to motherboard's IO is limited and you must pass cables through this grommet at the top that is semi covered by the motherboard's tray. Uh, plus there's an additional support beam that interferes with IO cables. So I removed it. Although there is no mention of it in the user's manual, which by the way, is a disappointing effort for the price you pay. And also the top fan mounts for exhaust will limit your access to the AO. So you'll have to think of something else here. And only the eight pin CPU cable felt a bit out of place for routing as everything else felt right in place. And finally, for my temperature analysis, here are my four configurations. They revealed that the default orientation is best for both the CPU and the GPU with slightly hotter CPU temps in all other configurations. All right, I know it's been a lengthy one, but I want to conclude by saying that this is my favorite Cosmos case yet. It meets the maker expectations quite well with various motherboard layouts, a much improved power supply shroud, and the angle GPU bracket is guaranteed to entice experimentation, which is why I'm giving the C700M the damn good innovative award. I know the price is quite heavy, especially compared to last year's Cosmos of so $299, and I'm surprised they have not put in a second ITX system mount in here somewhere, especially in the chimney layout, because there's definitely room for it, and also improve the backside for a little bit easier cable management, so you don't have to necessarily fight the case so much uh, when you're spending so much on it. The new Mark II Corsair Strafe and K70 keyboards are fully loaded with custom illumination, convenient media buttons, USB pass-through, extra set of keycaps, and ergonomic wrist rest for each keyboard so you can type or game comfortably with a variety of MX switches available so you can check out which keyboard suits you best in the description below. All right, guys, let me know what you think of the new Cosmos C700M. Make sure to check out this other relevant content. Let's have the conversation about how and why or why not this thing might be competitive in the market space today. Make sure to check out uh, our new boot sequence channel as well. And we'll see you in the next video. Woohoo!